in section 1.2 of our textbook, the topic at hand is applied percentage problems, meaning word problems or realistic scenarios where we want to answer a question and to do so we need to use percentages and do a simple calculation. So there's an example here at the beginning with some presidential elections. You can read through that. Uh, and all it's doing is driving home that the percentage is a way of scaling numbers so that we can compare them on equal footing. So in the example here, there are two presidential elections with very different numbers of votes. And so just telling how many votes someone got is not a meaningful way of comparing the two. Instead, we need to compare what percentage of votes someone got. And so you can see that played out in specific there. So percentages are used to add context to a number and to scale numbers so they can be compared. And of course, in our application later in this chapter, we'll be using percentages because interest rates are given as a percentage. You can read some more on other ways to use percentage to scale numbers, but the core of the section is this type of problem that we're going to solve here, word problems with percentages. And I give you three examples here just to introduce the idea. What is 20% of 275? 18 is what percentage of 54? And 12 is 45.3% of what? And the reason I set these up is because if you can solve these three problems, every other problem in the rest of the section will match one of these three. So if you can solve these three, you can solve anything. Now if you look carefully at this, what you can see is that there's a structure to this where you have three parts to each of these. You have something is some percentage of something else. And that's true for all three cases. Something is some percentage of something else. So there's three numbers that we can use. The first number is some percentage of the second number. So there's the two numbers and the percentage. Because of that, there's three types of problems we can ask, one where each of them is unknown. And that's what you see here. Here in the first problem, the first number is unknown, and then we have is a known percentage of a known number. And then the second example, the percentage is unknown, and the last example, the second number is unknown. So the general form here I give you is A is P percent of B. So we use P for the percentage and then A and B for the two numbers that we're comparing. And as long as we can solve these three, we can solve anything in this section. So we just need to solve for the missing piece. And what I've done here is rewrite those word problems as mathematical equations. So now we can solve for each of these pieces by doing maybe one step of algebra and then doing a little bit of arithmetic. So for example, in the first case, if we wanted to solve for the first number, we would just need to multiply 20% by 275. Now to do that, we'll have to remember to convert 20% to a decimal and then multiply. And then for the other two examples, we'll have to do one step of algebra where we divide both sides. In order to get p by itself, for instance, we need to divide off this 54 so that it's not being multiplied by p. So we divide that out to get p by itself. And then in the last example, we would divide this percentage to get b by itself. So the details you can see in the example in a little bit, but that's the core concept. And again, once you get that idea, every other problem in the whole section fits into one of those three categories so you can solve it the same way. Here's a, a reminder again that when you're doing calculations you need to always use the decimal form of a percentage. A percentage is just a way of displaying a number or describing it. When you're doing calculations you need to use the decimal form. Now here I have three examples just like the ones up above. I've changed the numbers but it's the same structure and you can read through that example and see the details of those calculations. Again, you should go through on your own. Ideally, you would try this problem yourself and see if you can do it. And then if you get stuck, you can read through the explanation and see where you went wrong. And 
if you can get it correct, then you can move on to the others. Uh, and of course, then you can try a similar one at the end where you can see those answers worked out. So again, if you can do those three types of problems, everything else fits into those categories. So now we're going to run into some word problems and the only challenge is going to be figuring out how to describe a word problem in terms of one of those kinds of percentage problems, applied percentage problems. So for instance, if you paid $4,000 in income tax on a salary of 45,662, you could figure out what percentage your tax rate is. Essentially, you'd be asking 4,000 is what percent of 45,662, which is just like part B, for instance, of those examples. So you can see that same kind of structure and it's cloaked within a word problem. And your job is just to figure out how to take that word problem and rephrase it as one of those applied percentage problems. So there's a variety of application problems here. You should go through each of them individually. Again, go through them in detail. Make sure you can um, follow them. As you go later in the section, try working them out before you look at the solution and see if you can get it correct uh, without reading the, the answer. And then you can read the solution if you need to. So there's several examples just like that. There are some tips you can read that uh, will basically give you shortcuts to answer the question more quickly, but it's nothing new. It's just a, a quick shortcut if you happen to notice um, some structure to the problem. Then again, more application problems. You can just go through. All these are very similar. Uh, it's just kind of building little pieces together, but it's all structured around those applied percentage problems. This one here is a good one to take note of. Uh, there are several homework questions like it, and it's a, it's a common type of question where there's something in this case, there's a, a TV that is on sale, and so we're looking for the sale price. What we want to do is take 25% off of the original price. So there's two ways to do this, and you could calculate 25% of this total amount and then subtract that, or you can instead think about subtracting ahead of time and say, if we start with the total price, which is 100% of itself, and then we take away 25%, what we're left with is 75%. And you can see this in the previous example as well. The sales tax example goes through this in reverse where we're adding a percentage. Here we're adding 7% sales tax. We could calculate 7% on its own and then add that to the original amount. Or we could think about, we started with 100%, we add 7%, so our total is 107% of what it was before. So you can work with percentages that are greater than 100. It just means something has increased beyond what it was to begin with. So again, the discount one is the same kind of idea where you can calculate 25% first and subtract it, or you can take a shortcut and just calculate 75% of the total price, and that gives you the sale price. And then this one also gives you more practice adding sales tax. There's one, what I call tricky percentage problem here. It's not tricky if you go through it carefully. It's only tricky if you try to guess the answer at the beginning. You originally paid $1,200 in taxes. The taxes decreased by 20% and then increased by 20%. You would think that they came back to 1,200, back to where they started. But if you go through it carefully, what you'll see is that after your taxes dropped by 20%, then when they increased by 20%, this 20% is 20% of the lower taxes that you're paying after that first year. And so the increase actually doesn't go all the way up back to 1200, it only goes up to 1152. So you can read through that in detail, or again, if you click on this example title, you can watch the video to go through it again more slowly, but just watch, watch out for that, pay attention, um, and it's a good reminder that when you see a percentage, it's a percentage of something. 
So here, when we see decreased by 20%, it decreased by 20% of 1,200. When it increased by 20%, it increased by 20% of 960. So the increase would be smaller than the decrease was. So just watch out for that and think carefully about uh, what a percentage relates to. Then lastly, there's a section on percentage increase and decrease, percentage change in general. And you can read through this. Really, there's nothing new here. It's just kind of a shortcut um, to take the applied percentage problems from earlier and kind of rephrase them a little bit. So change is given as the percentage of the original amount. That's the important piece to pay attention to. And then I give you a formula here for percentage change. Really, it's nothing new other than the um, applied percentage question. Here we're basically saying that the change is some percentage of the original amount, but if you do a little algebra and rearrange things, it ends up looking like this. So you can go through the examples and follow along with those percentage change problems, but um, there's not too much to worry about. There is this one um, kind of tricky one to pay attention to. If you know the percentage increase and you know the uh, final amount, you can work backwards to figure out the original amount. It just takes a little bit of algebra, one step of division uh, to solve for an unknown original amount. So watch out for that one. You might need to go through it uh, kind of slowly and, and make sure that that makes sense to you. And with that, that kind of brings us to the end of section 1.2. The core concept is those applied percentage problems back here at the beginning of the section. The rest of the section is mostly just details, examples, some little subtle things to watch out for, and then that idea of percentage change is kind of its own type of problem, but really it, it fits within this context. It's just one way that you'll see problems phrased every now and again. So that wraps up section 1.2 on applied percentage problems.